based on the feedback I'm getting, there are men who've been married 15, 20 years that said they've never heard their wife apologize. That's that's hard to say. I, I know some men who say, yeah, I'm just started dating someone. She's she's struggling to apologize. And men saying that they've been married for 20 years. So again, I think it's tied to the emotional maturity of that person. It's tied to the toxic shame if that person has trauma. In my humble opinion, they're very emotionally immature. And so that will make it hard for them to take accountability, take responsibility, to apologize if you're not a grown up. If you're not a grown up, you, you know, that's like kryptonite to you is accountability. You know, I don't want you to check out and, and give up on marriage. Oh, marriage is a problem. No, it's a, it's us humans. It's us humans are the problem, you know. It, it's both, you know, there are two people in that marriage and we both have to check ourselves. I had to check myself. I played a part in my marriage ending. I had a really great comment from an older black woman in my DMs because some people feel a way about commenting under the video. So yeah. they will reach out to me privately and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but she said, you know, a lot of women, we've been beat down and we have, you know, horrible pasts or, you know, our mothers or grandmothers had horrible pasts or we've experienced these awful things. And so understand that for us to acknowledge our mistake is like one more thing, you know, that now we have to put on our back. You know, it's one more thing that we have to admit to. And, you know, she just talked about all the traumas that certain women may have gone through. And I get that. Again, that's part of that toxic shame that we're talking about. Today's episode is special to me because I had the honor of being a guest on her podcast some, some years ago. And, and here we are again, being able to connect. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. This is going to be a great one. Today's guest is a, a, is a licensed professional therapist and love mentor who founded Better Love Movement, an online coaching business that helps women of all ages master their feminine power and create the relationships they want. I love that. She also has a private counseling practice in Virginia, a growth therapy center that focuses on couples counseling and relationship issues for singles. She is passionate about all things love and relationships as she as she knows that the quality of our relationship are that much richer when we are when our personal relationships are healthy and fulfilling. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Anita Stoutmeyer. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. The weather's beautiful here. A little crisp, but beautiful. Yeah, it was a little cold out here in Texas this morning, too. So mm -hmm. it's about that time. Yeah. My favorite time of the year, though, me personally. Yeah, fall. I love fall. Yep. Yep. Fall's yeah. my favorite season, too. <laughs> For sure. I want to speak with you today about the reel that you created. Mm -hmm. Is it true that women struggle with accountability? Oh, my God. Let's jump into this. Is it true that women struggle with accountability? And if so, why? So I have two theories. Um, as a therapist, I have two theories. And one of them is based on what I spoke on in the real, which is emotional immaturity. And I've been talking a lot about um, how a lot of us, so not just women, men too, mm -hmm. we have this extended adolescence that's what we're seeing in 2023. And it's this extended adolescent period that, you know, back in my mother's day, I would even say in my day that we were not afforded. At 18, you were grown and you had to grow up quickly. And I left my mother's house at 16. I left my dad's house at 18 and had to pay bills, had to pay rent, you know, had to figure things out. Whereas now, we're in this time where men are doing things like playing video games or watching porn well into adulthood. Those are things that you did in high school. And then you have women who are out here, you know, doing things, in my opinion, mutilating their bodies. They're they're putting all this stuff on themselves because, oh, you know, my peers say this is what I should be doing. My peers say this look good. Again, that's something we did in high school. So when we became adults, we put away childish things. We started doing what adults do, or we started definitely thinking for ourselves, being critical thinkers. So we have this 
extended adolescent period. And so it's making people, in my humble opinion, very emotionally immature. And so that will make it hard for them to take accountability, take responsibility, to apologize if you're not a grown-up. You're not a grown up, you, you know, that's like kryptonite to you is accountability. Mm -hmm. The second reason as a clinical professional is what we call toxic shame. So a lot of people have this toxic shame. And it basically means that if I admit to a wrongdoing, oh my God, that's, I'm a bad person. I'm a horrible person. And so they struggle with admitting, okay, I made a mistake or I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. But people who have toxic shame, they find it very hard to do because they don't have what we call dialectical thinking. And that means two things can be true at the same time. So for instance, I can explode on my partner or I could say something I didn't mean or say something offhanded. Um, and I can go back and I can apologize for that because that doesn't necessarily mean I'm a horrible person. It could mean that I was under a lot of stress or, you know, something was happening in my life and I reacted poorly. But see, two things can be true at the same time. I can make a mistake and I can also still be a good person. Mm, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's good. I There was because I reposted your reel on my mm -hmm. TikTok. And there was a, a lady that, that saw it and she said she wanted to know which age group were you addressing or is there an age group? Oh, no, there's no age group. <laughs> I've seen this in 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. You know, again, that emotional immaturity, that can be someone in their 50s or 60s. I've seen that people still struggling to take accountability. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it can be everybody. Mm -hmm. And so remember our emotional maturity is not based on age. It's based on the work. It's based on the ego work that we're willing to do. I've seen some amazing, very mature 25 year olds. Yes. And I've seen some immature 55 year olds. So yes, yes, I agree. Because sometimes do you think in your opinion, or even through your experience, you think it's easier to be accountable to someone you've been with over an extended amount of time, opposed to say, maybe you're a serial dater and you, you mm -hmm. have a couple of people in your rotation. Do you think it's easier to apologize to someone who you've been with over an extended amount of time? Well, based on the feedback that I'm getting, because like I said, every morning I'm waking up to my DMs full and based on the feedback I'm getting, there are men who've been married 15, 20 years that said they've never heard their wife apologize. So that's that's hard to say. I, I know some men who say, yeah, I'm just started dating someone. She's she's struggling to apologize. And men saying that they've been married for 20 years. So again, I think it's tied to the emotional maturity of that person. It's tied to the toxic shame, if that person has trauma. I had a really great comment from an older Black woman in my DMs, because some people feel a way about commenting under the video, so yeah. they will reach out to me privately, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but she said, you know, a lot of women, we've been beat down, and we have, you know, horrible pasts, or, you know, our mothers or grandmothers had horrible pasts, or we've experienced these awful things. And so understand that for us to acknowledge our mistake is like one more thing, you know, that now we have to put on our back. You know, it's one more thing that we have to admit to. And, you know, she just talked about all the traumas that certain women may have gone through. Mm -hmm. And I get that. Again, that's part of that toxic shame that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. However, I always express to people, you know, we we all have something. We all have some sort of trauma or something we've been through. However, one, I don't believe in letting that define you. And two, that will never be an excuse for mistreating people. Mm -hmm. Those are the two things people know in my practice or out that I'm going to hold you for. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let it define you. And it is not an excuse for you to treat people poorly. Mm -hmm. I love that. That is good. I'm so glad you said that because that that right there can set someone free. Yeah. 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 Because I know I've struggled with it because I've been through a divorce. Right. 
right and, uh, you know 15 years went through a divorce with Mary and I realized that I had a I had a serious struggle with apologizing and mm. just admitting when I'm wrong and actually make it creating the change behavior yeah yeah because they, they I believe they go hand in hand for sure for sure we should see growth I have a couple right now that is struggling because uh, the husband, you know, is really struggling with growing. So he keeps saying, you all are trying to change me. You all are trying to change me. And I say, no, we're, we're trying to get you to the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And in my humble opinion, you've stopped, you know, you've stopped here and you've said, this is the best version of myself. I said, and I think you're better than that. I believe in you. I think you're better than that. There is a better version of you in there. And that's where we're trying to take you. Mm -hmm. I love it. What societal or cultural factors do you think might contribute to some women leading it to difficult to be accountable for their actions? Um, you know, they, they, so this is what a lot of women are telling me mm -hmm. that feminism was born out of patriarchy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have some very, you know, controversial views about that. I'm not going to go into that here. Um, but, oh, you know, feminism wouldn't have had to happen had men, you know, treated us better and had we been afforded um, all the benefits that men have. And, you know, there's a reason why there's been this backlash, why women are the way they are. And this is what I'll say to that. You know, one thing I want women to understand, and this is my personal view, I don't think I don't believe that men were sitting around and honestly, I don't think they had women on their mind at all. I think men were thinking about them. They were thinking about their views and their world and what they wanted for themselves. I think if anything, it was more of a selfish thing, but they were not sitting around plotting to hold women down, to oppress women, to, you know, I just don't believe that. I think that they were mindless about it. Like, we're not thinking of women at all. <laughs> like, I really do. And a lot of, you know, feminist women, you know, say, oh, that's so naive of you to say. I said, but, you know, I know men. I was raised around men all my life. And I know them, you know, and they they really weren't thinking of y'all at all. You know, when they were creating the world and the U.S. and the land that we know, they were not plotting against women. They were not, you know, holding women down the way you think. They weren't really thinking of you all at all. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this whole, this is a response to, you know, them trying to oppress us and us being under their foot and all of that. I'm like, mm, okay. But at the same time, we're doing ourselves a disservice. And especially because, one of the things I'm noticing is marriage is at an all-time low. Um, families, people are not getting married. They're not having children. And that's going to hurt all of us. In the next 10, 15 years, we're going to see a huge community shift because marriage and family is the cornerstone of healthy community. And so we're going to have all these people out here, individuals, living alone and only thinking of themselves. And we're going to see that our world, our country is going to start to erode because we need healthy families. Mm, I agree because we do live in a individualistic society right. where um, even um, it's funny because the other day I was talking to my neighbor and he was just sitting in his garage mm -hmm. and I sat out there and, you know, we had a talk and, and we was out there for about a good hour and a half. And we just <laughs> really created this bond where right. we, we look out for each other. Like, yeah. you know, his dogs got loose in my backyard one day, like, Man, so sorry, you know, but all I'm saying is, is that we're creating this community because even today, when you have cars that pull up in garages, they, they don't put up their, uh, their yeah. garage door opener, three houses. Yep. Down, so they don't have to speak to you. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I have the same in my community. Mm -hmm. So on my street, I live in a subdivision here. Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, on my street, you know, there are several neighbors who have the key to my home. I have several neighbors that, like you said, my dog has gotten out and they brought him back. 
Uh, but we have a community here and it is a community of families. You have some uh, single women who live here. We have lots of families. We have one single guy who lives on our street. Um, we have some older folks who are just coupled, you know, they're empty nesters, but we have a community here. And you're right. We look out for each other. We have community events. The next community event is the um, Halloween parade. We have that every year where all the children in our neighborhood dress up. They go to the front of our community and they march down the street and then we all meet in the cul-de-sac and we have pizza and soda and then the kids go trick-or-treating. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Everyone dresses up. I dress up giving out candy. It's amazing. Yeah. And it, it, it hurts my heart to think that there are millions of people that will never experience that because they're going to their little apartment or they're going into their home, like you said, and just closing that garage door and they're not interacting with anyone. That's really sad to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we have the whole world in our hands on these devices. Yet right. the there's so many depressed people out here. Exactly. That loneliness epidemic. And I see that. I see that. I actually recently created a meetup group because I wanted to connect with people who uh, enjoyed all things personal development, some metaphysical stuff, just different things. And I personally created a meetup group. And so now people are joining that meetup group. We're going to have meetups once or twice a month. We're going to talk about, you know, all kinds of interesting things. But my hope I put in the, in the bio that this meetup group will be the cure to loneliness that we can make real connections. We can, we're going to have what we call a check-in chain. I used to do this in college. I created what's called the check-in chain. And so we had a group of friends. We were all in a study group together and we took similar courses. But what we would do is every Sunday, we would go down the check-in chain. So I would start it. I would call the person underneath me. I would check in with them for 10 or 15 minutes. Then they would call the person underneath them and so on, and so on, and so on. And everyone got a call from someone in the group just checking in, just seeing how we were doing. Mm. So I plan on implementing that in this group, doing the check-in chain. That's cool. I like mm -hmm. that. That's cool. Yeah, we got to get back to this stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, because I had a guest on not too long ago, and I don't know her personally, but she's been on the show twice already. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she shared some bad news or whatever online. And I just inboxed her and said, hey, you know, praying for you, wishing you the best yeah. for this. You know what I'm saying? Because you just never know what people are going through. So, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. This isn't in my notes, but I thought about this. With men, and I know this is a topic about women, but I kind of want to shift it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you think are some things that men can do to become... Um, uh, more dateable, if mm -hmm. I'm using the right word, or mm -hmm. more attractive to women. And I'm not talking about just physical, of course, you know, right. get on a treadmill, get your exercise, eat your oatmeal, I get it. But are there some other intangible things that you think that men can do to become more attractive to women in your mind? Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. So I have more male clients in my practice and more male coaching clients this year than ever. And that's a great thing. Like men are finally kind of waking up to personal development, to being their best self. One of the things that I work with men on all the time is their social skills, working on their social skills, working on their communication skills. Their communication skills are not great. Um, they definitely need better social skills. Uh, they need to learn how to read social cues. Um, and then the third thing is conflict resolution skills. They're not great at managing conflict. Men by nature are very conflict avoidant. So they tend to run the other way. So the dreaded words, hey, we need to talk. Oh, they're they're gone. <laughs> they're like, oh, no, 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 I'm not doing this. You know, and I, I want to see men go, yeah, what would you like to talk about? Like, I want to see them run into conflict like firemen run into buildings on fire. That's what I want to see men do. And what they're going to see is the more they do that, the less conflict they're actually going to have. But because they're so busy running away, running away, running away, making excuses, it, it's just building. It's building. And how about this? Even the conflict within themselves. I see men that want to address something with their woman or their wives, 
and they push it down, push it down, push it down. And then it comes up like they can't hold it anymore. And here we go. It blows up or they blow up. And I'm thinking, wow, you could have avoided this had you just gently said, hey, babe, you know, I'm noticing something and it's making me really uncomfortable. You know, can I share some feedback with you? Can I share some constructive feedback with you? And I actually give men these scripts. Like I have them printed out. I have them go home with it. <laughs> like, here's your script. Okay. And this is how I want you to say it. And they always come back with good reports. They're like, oh man, I said, I said the words you told me and it worked out great. You were right. It was not that bad. We talked through it. She was like, this was great. This was a great talk. This felt good. And you're right. I'm going to start doing this more. But those are the things that I'm working with my male clients on is stop avoiding conflict. And conflict will not always lead to the end. You know, a lot of men have this, oh, it's going to be over. You know, we're going to break up. No, no, it will actually deepen the relationship. Like, yeah, we had a hard conversation and she's still here. You know, we're still together. Yeah. And it deepens the intimacy. Yes. But those are the three things that I'm seeing is that the social skills are not great. And there's many reasons why that could be. Um, their communication is not great and their conflict avoidance. That is a big one that I'm saying, no, I want you to go towards it. Mm -hmm. I, I've been telling men and I send them to other, you know, male platforms. I have, I've been blessed to have so many amazing influencer friends, guys that create content and I love one guy who's always says, you know, you're not built to do everything easy. You're built to do hard things, right? Because men say, oh, but I'm not trying to hear her mouth. I'm not trying to get into it with her. You're built to do hard things. Like, I want you to believe that everything isn't going to be easy. So run into that burning building, just like the fire, you know, run into it and put that fire out. Yeah. And you're going to feel so good about yourself. Like, wow, we had this conversation. It got, a, you know, my heart rate raised a little, but mm -hmm. we're good. We're yeah. good now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because I, even with my wife and I, we have this designated pillow talk time now. Mm, that's it. It's, it's set for this time. Once we lay the kids down, she's like, yeah, these, this is, this is our time, you know, and I've even learned over time that, there's nothing wrong, like you said, there's nothing wrong with conflict to yeah. build that muscle because right. you, you got to build the muscle in order to be a little more comfortable in that right. level. Once you get to that level where you like, we have conflict resolution, that's okay. Like you said, it's not the end of the world. Nope. But you do build that muscle and your, communica your communication actually gets, gets better. Yeah. And I have men in my practice now, they're like, I'm out talking my wife and I'm like, Ooh, there, there you go. See, that's what I'm talking about. And then you're like, yeah, she backing down. Like, okay, well, I don't, I don't know if I want to talk about this. No, let's talk about it. <laughs> so I love those reports. Yeah. yeah. They're like, Nope, I've been practicing these skills and now I can communicate my thoughts and my feelings. I do it in a way that doesn't necessarily like blame her because yes, we are sensitive as humans. You know, we get defensive but there's a way to bring it. There's a way to talk about it that, you know, won't trigger someone's defensiveness. And even if you do, I encourage men to say, hey, how can I say this so you don't feel so defensive? Like, call it out. You know, I'm noticing you're defensive. Maybe it's some words I use, you know, help me to tell you in a way that won't make you so defensive. Yeah. Like that is a superpower to be able to communicate that way. Yes, I love it. And I was listening to a book from Dr. John Gottman mm. not too long ago. And he talked about how he tell he talks about in his studies how when they get ready to have a conversation with someone, hey, are you available? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Are you don't, available? Yeah. Don't just blindside people. Mm -hmm. So how I would bring it up when I was partnered, I'd say, um, hey hun, I'd love to talk with you about um the plans for our vacation. When would be a good time? Like we would set up an appointment mm -hmm. and it was, and sometimes he would say, well, right now is good. And yeah. sometimes he would say, I'm in the middle of the game. Let's mm -hmm. talk later tonight or let's talk tomorrow. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. see? So it was never a, you know, I'm throwing this on you and you gotta, you gotta do it now. No, I gave him the the space to tell me when was a good time. 
And every time I did that, that conversation went great because he was prepared. He got his mind right. He's like, okay, let me get my mind right. You know, but when you just jump in there and and hijack people, you know, no, it's not going to go as well. So give people, and it's respectful. It's respectful. Give people that sovereignty to say, yeah, now it's not a good time. You know, we can talk later tonight or yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The old school folks will call it tact. She has, she has tact. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. And we can, there's so many relationship skills that most of us are not receiving. You know, we're receiving poor relationship skills. We're learning how to stonewall. We're learning how to sweep things under the rug. You know, Um, we're learning how to be passive aggressive. See, those are the skills that a lot of us got from our mother or father, but we need to drop those skills. Mm -hmm. Those skills do not help. You got to learn some good, healthy skills. Yes. Yes. My therapist said to us the other day in our marriage, marriage counseling, he said that we should record something on our phone about the way we feel mm. and send it to that person yeah. because now they are uninterrupted. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives so you, I use, about it. Mm-hmm. yeah, I use something called the Imago dialogue. That's Harvell Hendricks work. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the basis of it is there will be one speaker and mm-hmm. there will be one receiver. And so when someone's speaking, all you can do is just receive, you mirror back, you can validate, and you can empathize. That's it. You know, you can't jump in and say, well, I've been feeling that way too. And I, you know, (laughs) all you can do is hear it, mirror it, validate it, empathize with it. Yes. And then you can switch like the other person can Mm -hmm. go and they Mm -hmm. can be the speaker and you can be the receiver. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's a healthy relationship skill. None of us saw that coming up, myself included. Yeah. I didn't see my parents do that. So, yeah, but that's that's why I love the work that I do. I get to teach people how to have healthy relationships and how to have healthy relationship skills. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I, um, because my wife and I, we've been working on our communication and I I tell I say what I, what I heard you say was, and then I read it back to her. Yep. And then she confirmed, yes, that's what I said. So now I'm hearing it twice. Yep. Yep. Good. Y'all are doing good. And what what makes me so proud about that, right, is like you said, there can be some shame around a failed marriage. You know, I'm I'm divorced, you know, and I don't consider it technically a failed marriage. I consider it a relationship that ended. Mm-hmm. And in my case, it needed to end, you know. So I'm like, yeah, that relationship needed to end. Um, but there can be a lot of shame around that. And what I say to people is, you know, I don't want you to check out and, and give up on marriage. Oh, marriage is the problem. No, it's a, it's us humans. It's us humans are the problem. You know, it, it's both, you know, there are two people in that marriage and we both have to check ourselves. I had to check myself. I played a part in my marriage ending. Uh, but what I have done is I've gone on a journey. And for the last 25 years, I said, you know what? If I'm ever given the chance again, oh, I got this. I got this. I I got skills. I got tools. I know how to watch my mouth. I've done my ego work. Um, Oh my gosh, it's just been amazing. And I've had some, you know, amazing partners since then. And they've helped me to grow. They've helped in the evolution of who I am. So let me tell y'all, whoever my next husband is, like he getting, hmm, he getting a whole lot. He's getting a whole lot and he's going to be like, wow, this is amazing. So I'm glad you're doing that work. That's amazing. Yes, it can be challenging at times, but I always tell myself it's it's the long-term investment. Do it now exactly. so yep. it isn't killing you on the back end. Exactly. Good. That's amazing. And I wish more people did that, but they have a failed relationship or a relationship end and they check out. They're yep. like, nope, nope, I'm never doing this again. And and marriage is a problem. I'm like, no, no, that you're not taking full ownership. You know, it's us. It's us as humans. And, you know, again, I, I'm a wonderful woman. However, I, my mouth got reckless. You know, I can own it. My mouth got reckless in my marriage. You know, mm-hmm. um, I didn't fully lean in to my husband's leadership. You know, I, it was a part of me that was always kind of stepped back. Like, I don't know what you're doing. You know? <laughs> 
And he could feel that like, okay, you don't trust me. You're not leaning into my leadership. Um, there were some things on my end that I had to check. So yeah, we all have to do that. Yes, that's beautiful. Like you say, we're just being human, right? Just That's it. That's <laughs> it. There is no shame in that. We're going to make mistakes. But that's the main thing. I try to slowly walk people through in therapy when it comes to accountability is I try to be as gentle as I can. Mm -hmm. But at some point, I will confront you. And so in that first session, and plenty of people have heard me say this, you know, I kind of give them an idea of what my style is. And, you know, I let them know it's not for everybody. I say, hey, I'm going to be as sweet as I can be. Uh, but at some point, I will confront you if I see things that are not, that are hindering your growth. Yes. And most people, and this is what I wanted to, you know, give context to about my reel. Most people, men and women, they're okay with that. And they do stick around and they keep doing their work. There's about maybe three to 5% of people that are like, oh, no, oh, no, I can't take it. And they they run out of there. But most people, I think they want to grow. They want to be better. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's good. In your opinion, what strategies or support systems could help women become more accountable for their actions? So, yes, I believe therapy is a part of that journey. Um, doing ego work, um, doing the work to become more emotionally mature. Mm -hmm. Those are things that, again, I work with women on. And again, I have to be very gentle because women are not like men. You know, the men in my practice, they want a straight no chaser. Yeah. Like they're okay with me being very direct. And, and they're like, wow, you're one of the first women that I've worked with that's just very direct with me. You're telling me what the issue is. You're telling me what I need to do to solve it and how I need to fix it. And now I need to practice it. Uh, women, I have to be a little more gentle. Um, I have to listen. I have to listen to a lot of feelings. They're emotors, you know, so I have to listen to their feelings and validate their feelings. But at some point, you know, I let them know I am going to confront you. If I see things that are hindering your growth, um, if I see behaviors that are just not healthy, you know, I have to call it out and I, I warn them like it's not going to feel good. It's yeah. not going to feel good. But it is like grandma, my grandmother giving me castor oil, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good for me, but I didn't like it going down, but it will be good for me. So I do, you know, tell people what my style is, which is uh, it's, it's pretty honest. It's very direct. I believe in radical honesty and, you know, I'm kind, but I'm going to say some things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've had people leave therapy and that's okay because I have to be my authentic self. Yes. Yeah. And I was telling someone earlier today, I said, you know, Kevin Samuels and I, we had a lot of things in common. We were actually two months apart in our birthday. Mm -hmm. So we were the same age, came from the same generation. Um, and much of what he said, you know, I believe was the truth. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like his delivery yes, because I didn't think it was edifying. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was um, set in a way that was actually going to inspire people to want to be different. Mm -hmm. I think what it caused women to do was, was again, that toxic shame. Okay. So that's not good. We don't want to make people feel worse about themselves. We don't want to re-traumatize people. Like that's not my intention, but we do want to give them the truth in a way that hopefully, you know, it can land, they can hear it, and then they can make some changes. So one of the great things that a lot of men don't realize about that reel is I've had a lot of women come into my DM that want to work with me. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are women who, who want, they notice that in themselves and they want to do the work. Mm, that's good. Do you, is do you see any difference? I'm trying to think of the best way to say this because we just talked about tact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you think women that, and just from your opinion, do you think that women that's more attractive? Mm -hmm. Do you think they struggle more with accountability to opposed to women that might not be as attractive? Right. Well, we, here's what we know based on um, Tai Chishiro's book. He talks all about, um, yes, people who tend to be very, you know, societally attractive that we're going to have, um, and I'm going to think of it any second now, there's a theory 
that is going to is jump straight out of my mind. But there's this theory that says people who are more attractive, we put these um, these positive traits on them. Like we don't even know them, but mm-hmm. because they're attractive, we're putting these positive traits on them. Yeah, and that to me makes people definitely lazy in the character aspect because they're like, yeah, I'm attractive. I've had everything given to me and people just assume I'm good. People just assume I'm, I'm a good person. No, that doesn't necessarily mean that. So we have got to be very careful about that because yes, a very attractive woman who's, you know, been fawned over and been given everything and told how cute she is. Yeah. In her mind, she can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. I can do no wrong and you should just be blessed to be with me. You should be blessed to be here. But that type of behavior is not good. And at some point, you know, a man is, go- you know, her looks are going to wear off and he is going to get sick of that. Yeah. So, yeah, we have seen that historically is that we do tend to put um, these positive qualities on people who are attractive. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're good people. So we got to be really careful about that. Everybody needs to do their work. Yeah, everybody I agree, because even I think he talked about in that book about the the wait waitresses making more tips. Mm, yeah, mm. So. yeah, pretty privilege is what we call it, pretty yeah. privilege, and that is a thing. Mm-hmm. And yet, and still, we have to do our work. Like we have to be willing to do our work. So for me, it's it's all about building that character. I'm trying to become the most um, the person with the highest integrity, the person who is kind. You know, regardless of whether people are attributing those positive qualities to me or not. And my my latest thing is uh, putting away my grocery card every time. Mm. Like I am really committed to that now. And so I've put other people's grocery carts away. Like it, it's such a simple thing, but I'm like, yeah, I want to be that person. So it's something I've been working on. Like, how can I be better? How can I be kinder? Um, how can I be more conscientious? Mm. So we all need to work on that. Mm. That's beautiful. I'm, I'm glad that you said the cart thing because I do <laughs> the same thing. I don't leave my cart. I'm right, just like, right. you know, then they start thinking you work there because you're putting your cart away. Right, right. Yep. <laughs> I want to jump into the bonus round. I have some questions. There's no right or wrong. Mm-hmm. So I just want to like pick your brain. I always find these to be interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess... Huh. I was going to say, what's the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? But I mean, I guess we've been kind of talking about that all all day. So, Mm, so yeah, like you said, not being able to apologize, not um, holding themselves accountable. One of the things that I honestly, well, my platform exists because I don't believe women study men the way men study women, you know, and I give people this, the analogy of the capuchin monkey. So, I would love to one day own a capuchin monkey. Like that's, I just want one. You know, I've just always wanted that. Uh, And it is a very exotic animal. And if I'm going to own that animal, I need to study it. I need to learn all about it. I need to learn about its habitat, what it eats, you know, everything there is to know about it. Because if I just go out tomorrow and I buy a capuchin monkey and I put it in my house, it's probably going to wreak havoc. It's going to destroy some things or, you know, it's going to cause a lot of havoc mm-hmm. because I don't know anything about it. Having a man is no different. Like we have to understand the nature of men mm-hmm. and men are very different than women. But women tend to think a man is a defective woman. Like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, no, he's a man. You know, men love their sports or um, they're very physical. Men are about doing, not so much talking. And men are rational and logical. And that's not bad. That's called being a man. (laughs) And honestly, I want a man. Mm -hmm. If something went awry in our country and, you know, something crazy happened, like what we're seeing overseas, oh, I want a masculine man on my team. I want that man to activate. And for him to go into survival mode, protection mode, I want a masculine man. And yet we're believing that that's toxic Mm -hmm. and it is far from it. I I want masculinity on my team all day long. (laughs) So, yeah. And I want women to understand that, that there is nothing toxic about a strong man, about a man with principles, about a man with backbone and boundaries. 
that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of women, you know, they use these phrases to try to shame a man. Oh, you're just being controlling. Okay, because I have standards? No, no, because I have boundaries. Or, or you know, are you insecure? Like there's these these catchphrases that some women use, but they're really, you know, a form of shaming or manipulating. And I think men need to be very careful about that, mm-hmm. you know? But yeah, I want women to learn men the way men have learned women. Love it. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? My father was a very stereotypically masculine man, still is, 81 years old. Um, They were not compatible. (laughs) They were very incompatible as a couple. Um, They should not have married. Uh, They should have had a love story, not a life story. And I think they had a very, you know, passionate uh, love for each other. Um, But they wanted to turn that into a life story. And really, it should have just been a love story. They should have just kind of had a summer fling and called it that, but, you know, they attempted to have a life story and uh, their marriage ended. But one of the greatest things I think my parents' marriage taught me was about gender roles and how beautiful of a dance it is when you have that, when you have a masculine man and a feminine woman. My mom is the antithesis of femininity. And I'm proud to say that I too, am a very feminine, naturally submissive woman. Um, But she taught me so much, her and my grandmother, they taught me about femininity, about, you know, having a strong man and, you know, being under his leadership and how amazing that can be. My mom was smart as a whip. You know, she was a businesswoman. You know, she had so many wonderful qualities, but she was also incredibly feminine, incredibly submissive. And so they had a dance, you know, they kind of had this dance where there were things that he did and there was things that she did. And it was this beautiful dance that they had. And so, yes, you know, my marriage was very much like that. I married a man who was a provider and very masculine. And, you know, um, I believe that, you know, I, I went to college and so I got some of that feminist dogma. And so that's what led to some of that, you know, not fully trusting, being a little reckless with my mouth. Um, But for the most part, you know, we had a very gender specific, you know, there were things he did and there were things I did. You know, he worked full time. I stayed at home and took care of our home and our children. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I did learn that from my parents. And I think that was actually really good because, yeah, our marriage was great until it wasn't. Mm Yes. Yes. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? I think it's easier to love someone else. You know, I think self-love is really a struggle and so many reasons why that is, but it is what we need to master. I want to see more people master self-love, um, their self-worth and just accepting themselves and even the icky parts. Like I have finally learned how to accept the icky parts, you know, the parts of, ah, I wish I wasn't like that. I wish I, you know, didn't do that or wasn't like that. However, I have just learned to embrace all of it, especially because I'm still a work in progress. Like I'm still working on those icky parts, but I'm like, yeah, that's kind of icky. You know, that's me. That's kind of messy, but that's me, yeah. you know, and I have, you know, I'm every day working on mastering that self-love, but people, oh my God, they're ready to give it. They're ready to give love and grace to other people and they don't give it to themselves. So we got to work on that. And what we see, like you said, this whole individualistic society, we think we love ourselves, but a lot of us don't. It's a facade, but oh, they, they act like they do. Oh my gosh. And look at me and look at this and I've got this and that. That's not true Mm self-love. True self-love is, you know, at your highest or lowest, Mm -hmm. like you love yourself, you, you believe in yourself, you're good. So I wish more people, you know, focused on that true Mm self-love. Yeah. And that's a, that's a topic within itself. I would, yeah, (laughs) I might have to bring you back for that one. Cause you said, you said a mouthful that needs uh to be broken down to the smallest yeah. count <laughs> yeah 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 this has been a phenomenal show uh 
Anita, I want to acknowledge you for just being a change, an agent of change out in this culture. And yeah, I hope and so. so. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you going viral everywhere. So I'm, yeah. you're, you're, you're starting a conversation. So I'm yeah. uh, grateful for that. And then just acknowledging you for your boldness and to be able to share your testimony and your story and to be able to help mm-hmm. others because you just never know who's struggling. Yeah. Through your testimony, you can help someone else. Uh, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. So if you want to find any of the content I create, it is Better Love Movement. So if you just Google that, it would take you to my YouTube channel. It would take you to my books. It would take you to my podcast, which is now, you know, I, I no longer have my podcast that, but I have, I think over 200 episodes of my podcast um, that you can listen to. It will take you to my Instagram, my Facebook, everything out there is Better Love Movement. Mm, awesome. And I'll have everything linked in the show notes so that way yep. we'll have access to all that. Well, Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go connect with Anita because she is phenomenal. She is doing some life-changing work out here. So make sure you connect with her. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're watching this. Uh, We'd we'll love to hear from you in the comment section below. What were some of the takeaways from this conversation? If you are listening to this via Apple Podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. By yes. doing so, it leaves uh, leaves you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things? Uh, we just had winter not too long ago, and I read the comments and stuff like that. So, yeah, so leave those comments and reviews. This is Sean Heineman with special guest. Anita Stoutmeyer. Yes, Brave Hearts community. Take care. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of It's Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.